Now with a championship at stake, Jeff Snyder stands on guard for Canada and in the way of Team USA and Rob Pinnell, the attackman who has taken the Americans to glory's doorstep. Put on USA is, is obviously a humbling, you know, unbelievable experience. You want to make sure you're doing your best at all times, and even though there's that level of competition, there's still that level of you know, a high level of camaraderie as well. It really is unlike any other thing, and, and people say it. You're all, um, you know, a team now, and you're all working towards one common goal, which is to keep the gold with the USA. Well, welcome to the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships, presented by Trusted Choice. Canada enters on a perfect night for a stroll in Denver at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. A long-standing lacrosse rivalry will be reheated with the reigning champs from the United States. These two teams on respective win streaks of six for U.S., five for Canada, roaring into a championship final tonight for all to see. We begin the festivities by honoring these two great nations and directing your attention to public address announcer Connor McGahee. Nations represented here tonight with the singing of O Canada, followed by the Star Spangled Banner, as performed tonight by Ryan Bowman. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide O canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free O canada we stand on guard for thee O canada we stand on guard for dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Beautifully well done. Gets you in the mood for a title game. The semifinals of this tournament were staged on Thursday. The Americans jumped out to a 7-0 lead and jumped all over Australia, while Canada rallied from a three-goal deficit to race past the Iroquois Nationals, now the culmination of a 38-team field. 
It is so great to see you again, along with Quinn Kesnick. I'm Joe Beninati. We'll have Paul Carcaterra saddling up in just a second. We had a lot of ground to cover over the last 10 days a year. We may have the final we expected, but it's not a foregone conclusion. 38 teams from six continents, and this week is featured just basically a festival of lacrosse, national pride, camaraderie, sportsmanship, world-class competition. As far as tonight, the USA has looked invincible this past week. But don't count Canada out. History shows 1978-2006 that an upset could be looming. Team Canada has roared since losing to the United States in round-robin play. And over that stretch, Jeff Snyder and Curtis Dixon have been making headlines. Now, Curtis Dixon, the sniper out of the University of Delaware, creative finisher from the right-handed wing, clutch and timely goals in this event. Jeff Snyder, 33-year-old face-off midfielder, 67% in this tournament. He was the hero back in 2006 when Canada won this event. Toughness, leadership, and extra possession. The U.S. men's national team has stormed through the tournament with gaudy numbers, not the least of which have come from Paul Rabel and Rob Pinnell. Rob Pinnell, the NCAA all-time points leader while at Cornell, a gifted quarterback behind the goal, able to accelerate and create offense. Rabel's playmaking ability is a facet of his game that's definitely caught the attention of our Paul Carcaterra. Well, Joe, when a superstar athlete hits his prime, the game typically slows down, and that has been the case without question for U.S. midfielder Paul Rabel. His selfless play is making this offense unguardable and defining the unit. He's become one of the best passing midfielders ever. Double nines is a unique blend of size, skill, and off-the-charts lacrosse IQ. This is his team. And this would be his time off of a dynamite performance four years ago in Manchester, England, now looking to duplicate the feat and put down Team Canada in a world championship finale. As the two teams meet at midfield, this has been another busy day in Commerce City, about 10 minutes away from downtown Denver. They played three games in the fifth place game. England got the better of Scotland, the best finish ever for the Scots. In the third place game, Iroquois over Australia, 16 to five. Dylan Ward will get the call for Team Canada and Q as this tournament has progressed, he's been impressive. Ward uh, blew up his senior year at Bellarmine. He'll cross and shake hands with Jesse Schwartzman, who comes in at 53% for Team USA. Q, I have to ask you, in the moments prior to this game, what's the mindset of the elite player in, in perhaps his biggest game of his life? Well, your self-talk, this is where I belong. I'm ready to play the best game of my life. I've done the work, and I deserve victory. I'm going to be a playmaker within the confines of our game plan and commit to 60 minutes, maximum effort for your teammates. Jesse Schwartzman with a look to the heavens as he prepares to battle Jeff Snyder and Team Canada. They met last week, last Thursday, a 10-7 decision for the Americans. The face-off departments for both of these teams have been vital to their success over the last 10 days. The United States throwing a two-pronged attack at Jeff Snyder, either Chris Eck or Greg Gerenlian. It'll be Eck to get things started. The team as a whole, the Stars and Stripes, 80% effective, fashioning a 6-0 mark. So glad you've tuned in there with us on ESPNU. And north of the border on TSN2, we are underway in the fight for the world crown. Canada in red, the veteran Jordan Hall in his third world championships. Randy Mearns, the head coach for Canada, getting offensive-minded subs on, namely Cam Flint, who's been playing with a, a tight hamstring. Word is he's ready to go full throttle tonight. Hall walks it on the outside. Abbott is there for the United States in white. When they met in round robin play in the blue division, Canada jumped out to a 3 0 advantage. Off the inside, Durkin, good defense. Sturdy on Curtis Dixon. Clearing game for the United States has been very, very foolproof. Hartzell plays to the corner. 
first offensive touch for Team USA and Paul Carcaterra, what needs to get done? It's all about the next man spinning the ball around. Offensive coordinator Jeff Tambroni wants all six guys involved, dish and dump, and then defensive approach. Defensively, they have to go out against the Canadians and make sure they're shading their strong hands. Lawson and Rabel connecting through the midfield. It has been a bang-up tournament for Dave Lawson, especially against the Australians, whom he victimized for eight goals in two games. Marcus Holman, no slouch in his own right. Richie Mead has gotten contributions from just about everybody in that lineup, top to bottom. Mundorf on the go. The speed dodge working against Rubish, who staves him off. In world championship play, no 60-second shot clock, no timer on. Pennell, USA's leading scorer, lobs it over the top for Mundorf, who was all-world in 2010. On the dive shot, he lost it out of the top of his cross. Holman again, the 23-year-old Baltimore, Maryland native. Working off the split dodge against McIntosh. Tough catch to the interior. Double teamed was Buchanan. It squirts loose. Pinnell is right there as a safety valve. Rabel to the alley. Fires one wide of Dylan Ward. He may have got a whisker of it on the way by. This team counted the defense playing without Jason Noble. 23-man roster. They're a little short-handed. I expect Team USA to test Matt Vince and Kyle Rubish down below. Noble lost to injury in the semi-final victory for Canada over Iroquois. Lawson on a skip shot there, denied by Ward, and the rebound is claimed by Vince. As the Canadians move upfield, Quint tells you what's on their to-do list. Got to play with pace and precision in their two-man pick-and-roll games. And defensively, no failed clears or second chances. They had seven broken clears against Team USA. That really led to that Stars and Stripe eight-goal run. They had five failed clears against the Iroquois. Absolutely picture-perfect night for lacrosse. A world championship final between the United States and Canada. Team USA has won this tournament nine times in the past. Canada twice, most recently for the guys in red on home turf in London, Ontario, back in the summer of 06. Jordan Hall had one goal in the semifinal win over Iroquois. Works off the split, no room there afforded him. Bernhardt was right in the lane. Hall's a lefty, watch how he is shaded. Crowley, could this be his bust out night in this tournament? Relatively quiet by his standards. Good defense there, Durkin in concert with Dan Burns. Burns gives Crowley the left hand. Crowley's a strong right-handed tendency player. Randy Mearns telling us that he pumped up the tires of Crowley, who's been a little quiet in this tournament. He did get a marker on the board against the Iroquois in the semis. Just three by my count over the 10-day tourney to this point. We're looking for the first strike tonight, almost five minutes deep, 20 minutes running quarters in the World Championships. Holding, guarded by Burns, who has dealt with his own injuries over USA's first six meetings. Back behind the cage, they'll operate. Curtis Dixon has been a shooting star for our neighbors to the north. The theme in pool play with this Canadian offense, who can beat their man, draw a double team, or score an unassisted goal? Penetration, minimally invasive for this Canadian offense. Guys, field level. Coach Dave Petronal, defensive coordinator, asking the ref for a stall warning. Canada Clark prefers a slow pace, averaging 35 shots. Meanwhile, U.S. taking 48 per game. As usual, Canada shooting to a high percentage. Dixon, double team, badgered by Evans and by Durkin, the former Johns Hopkins Blue Jay tandem. There's a flag down, loose ball around. Schwartzwitz crease it almost dribbled across that line. And we hear the whistle. Referee Dave Campbell, Brent Coulomb, Chris Clark, and Peter Davidson, the officials tonight. Right there. The angles of that double team were good. Evans, a little out of control with his stick. 
Canada just a shade below 30% effective on extra man in this tournament. A 5 and 1 mark for them. 4 and 1 through the blue division. The lone loss to Team USA in the tournament opener. Zach Greer has a heavy shot on the perimeter. 88 and red. Matthews is a man of a million fakes down low. Crowley over the top. Sent it wide. Jones vacates on that left-handed wing and kind of drags the defense towards the middle and Crowley carries outside of it. Nifty little wrinkle. More than halfway through the extra man. They rotate for Dixon. He gets inside off the shoulder of Jesse Schwartzman. The ricochet belongs to Wesley Bird. Canada in possession, tail end of the first extra man of the game. Greer back for Crowley. Move it quickly for Matthews on a give and go. It's down on the deck and scooped by Team USA's 23-year-old Jesse Bernhardt. Schwartzman able to play clear. Team USA back to full strength. It'll be six on six at the offensive end for Matt Abbott. And a thunderous ovation for the special teams for the United States right off the hop. We introduce you to Max Seaball, 42 in the white. Outstanding midfield scoring production. When he was through at Cornell, it was the best ever in the record books. Jogging with him, it's David Earl. Garrett Thule, marked by McIntosh, who wears the 24. More customarily worn by John Grant Jr., who's on the sideline for Team Canada. More on his story as this game progresses. Pinnell on the go. Rob Pinnell, skip a man. That's a low pass that'll get away from Mundorf. He tracks it down at the midline, and Dan Coates is right there with him. This USA team took six attackmen on their roster, and many of them have played a lot of time at the midfield. Seaball fires. He rings the post with a bouncer. The ricochet. Thule flattened Earl, and it's kicked on to the Canadian side. The offensive side for them, unsettled. Earl gliding in, fires off the crossbar. Pipes at both ends. Abbott, heave ho and away you go for Marcus Holman. Joe, I mentioned that the U.S. has six attackmen on this roster, playing midfield all week long. Guys like Marcus Holman, Garrett Thule, and Ned Crotty. The ball hits the carpet. Crotty and Thule get caught out of position off this ground to run into the box to get a substitution, leading to a Canadian five on three. Back to back post shots at either end. Rabel's in no hurry. Move it on the outside there with Dave Lawson. Zone defense. Rabel probing that defense now, along with Lawson, all on the exterior. Mundorf in his customary spot behind the cage. Buchanan wiggles in. Pinnell, who has been dynamite in all facets of his offensive game. Rabel bounces this one off of Canadian defenders and wide of the goal. Dylan Ward, one of the best save percentages in all the tournament. On the hop for McIntosh, and Canada will go six on six. We are still looking for the first goal of the game nearly 10 minutes in. Canada hasn't shown much zone defense in this tournament. Terrific move by their defensive coordinator, Taylor Ray, the head coach at St. Joe's. Jeff Tangroni telling me before the game, one of the keys offensively, adjust, manage the shutoff, manage their pressure, and manage their zone. Canada won that, that last possession in the zone. On the go, Adam Jones is here. Zach Greer on the cradle with Wesley Berg. Berg picked up by Kyle Harrison. Cam Flint with Abbott jogging with him. Back behind the cage, hiding there. Jeremy Noble, who has moved into that position early in this tournament and has flourished. Flint on the go. Lee Zink shading, lending some support. Evans picks up Noble. Neither side forcing the issue just yet. Greer trying to run past Abbott and then Bernhardt. Jeremy Noble on the inside cut. It's off the top of the crossbar. Matthews was foiled. Ran out of real estate. Didn't have much angle. But how about Jeremy Noble? 
the leader behind the goal. We watched this team scrimmage Scotland on July 9th, and I, I couldn't figure out who's back there. He was a do-it-all midi for Bill Tierney for the Denver Pioneers, and now he's running the show from behind the goal. Midfielder of the year in the conference, and we'll chat with University of Denver Pioneer head coach Bill Tierney later on tonight. He'll be joining us in the booth in the fourth quarter. Matthews off the big face dodge, just sent it wide. You know, gentlemen, you're mentioning Jeremy Noble. He was a midfielder, but he had 30-plus assists. One of the top five assist-producing midfielders in the nation. He inverted a lot, too, so he's surely comfortable behind the net. And he has shown that. And as the week has gone along, it's Saturday night. It's day 10 of the tournament. This is the championship finale. Gold medal on the line. Berg on the swim twice. Adam Jones in his first world championship appearance. This Canadian roster, very young with respect to international experience. Jones, nowhere to go, no angle. Good work by Harrison to honor his strong side. Skip a man, Greer, off the head fake. Zach Greer had it blocked on the trail check by Bernhardt. Still Canada ball. No score between two teams, the top six scorers in the tournament. The United States are number one overall in total offense. These long possessions in the heat, like body punches. Berg inside, Greer was attacked by Zink. Solid defense from the Stars and Stripes continues. Attrition, conditioning, dealing with altitude and extreme heat has been a major storyline this week in this 10-day event. 25-year-old Kevin Crowley has the ball from Beautiful British Columbia, Canada. He'll hand it off for Jordan Hall, another BC native. Less than seven to go in a scoreless opening quarter. Stall warning against the Canadians in effect. Canada doubling up the United States in terms of shots taken so far. Hall to the interior. Inside one more, and it's slammed home. Kevin Crowley. Team Canada able to substitute fresh midfield legs onto the field as a tuckered out USA defense jogs over to the sideline. The play started right here. Great down screen set by number 19, Cameron Holding. Allows Hall to get to the middle of the field. The USA then is forced to slide. Eyes on the ball carrier. Backdoor cut by Crowley. It all starts with a wonderful down screen. It creates the lane for Jordan Hall. Just what the doctor ordered for Team Canada. They need midfielders breaking the defense down. They have some of the best finishers in the world. Just the initiators is what they were lacking. Second goal, Paul, in his many outings against the Americans for Kevin Crowley in his second World Championship performance. Joe, so that's the exact look that Canada GM Dave Huntley said that John Grant Jr. was drawing up on the uh, dry erase board so well. Those hard picks, precise with a plan. Seaball with a mission here, going right to the goal. He fired it wide. John Grant Jr., who pulled himself off of the Team Canada roster. He's a member of the coaching staff. John had been using a testosterone treatment that had been prescribed by a physician. It's on the list of anti-doping agents. John applied for a therapeutic exemption. It was turned down by the event organizers of the FIL World Lacrosse Championship. So Grant Jr. had the option of coming off the medication. He did not. He voluntarily removed himself from the lineup, and he says these are the toughest of days, the minutes, the seconds that he steps onto the field and watches his Canadian brothers going against Team USA. Found his voice as a coach this week early on, kind of a guy just warming up goalies. By the end of the week, empowered, and he has everyone's attention. Mundorf chased, harassed on the perimeter by David Earl. Mundorf comes up with a scoop. Unsettled now, makes a break for it. Cross field for Seaball. 1-0 Canada. Kevin Crowley is on the board. Seaball dodging against McIntosh. An open look for Mundorf. He sent it wide of Ward, who went to the splits. Pinnell on the restart for the United States. Pinnell gets to the interior, snaking his way through the D. Nice look inside. It's just shoveled wide by Garrett Thule. 
the United States offense so precise in its first six outings. Struggling to dent the twine here. Holman playing a game with Pinnell and then Seaball from the outside. Nothing there. Ward stopped that. The rebound was dumped wide by Thule. The United States cold at the outset. 0 for 9 in the shooting department. Canada ball in the clear with three and a half to go in a quick moving first quarter. Left side of your screen, watch this flourish in front. Seaballed a little outside of his range. Nice rebound pickup, and you pay the price when you play against this red shirt team. This clearing is, is a big factor in this game. Canada has struggled in two key matches to advance the ball. U.S. ride has been terrific. Opponents only clearing 80%. They forced 21 failed clears. Throughout the night, keep your eyes peeled on the bottom of the screen. You'll be seeing a whole bunch of statistics, the last of which told you just how tough the shooting has been in the early going for these two. The only goal coming from Kevin Crowley. The reigning Major League Lacrosse MVP. Major League Lacrosse action heating back up this weekend. Hall guarded by Abbott with two and a half to go. Jordan Hall sifting back behind the cage for Jeremy Noble. Noble had four against Japan in this tournament. Hall with a good face dodge going to the cage. Lost it. Right there to back up was Crowley. Durkin keeping an eye on Noble. Hartzell looking after Crowley. I like that pattern, Joe. Hall off the shoulder of Adam Jones who set that screen. Hall's going to try it again. More two-man games from the Canadians than we saw in the tournament opener. A lot of dancing and tiptoeing in that game. you got to run hard off the shoulder of your teammate who sets the pick. Ball movement here for Holden. Jukes to the interior, checked by Abbott. 90 seconds to go in the first quarter right now. 24-year-old Adam Jones, defended by Burns. Former walk-on at Maryland who became captain of the Terrapins. Hall, switch it up. Crowley. Team Canada possessing the ball well. Extended possessions. Zink running with the Crowley. Hall on the delay. 60 seconds to go. Man-to-man -man defense, forcing guys to their weak hand. If they do get to their strong hand, they get double teamed pretty quick. Jeremy Noble works it on the outside. They swing it up top for holding. Whitby, Ontario native. Dave Petromala right now telling his defense to get down while Kevin Crowley inverts. This is the way they will counter this behind the goal action by 21 in red, who typically operates up top. But Petromala all over the refs as well, asking for some moving picks inside. Stall warning put on the Canadians in the final half minute. No shot clock, no timer on. International rules, you're gonna see very, very, very deliberate play. Interior pass, deflected, stuff attempt, score! Crowley, along the goal line, beating Schwartzman to the punch. Talked about the extended possessions, body punches, and this USA defense looked a little tired and flat-footed on that ground ball. Schwartzman makes a decision, and it doesn't pay off. Right here, he comes out to try to make the hit instead of playing goal. Crowley's got two. His first multi-goal game of the tournament. Canada blanked U.S. the first 10 minutes the last time, the first 20 minutes tonight. Stars and Stripes looking for a world championship in Denver. 2-0 Canada after one. World Lacrosse Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you. These are the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice.
from Dick's Sporting Goods Park. 20 minutes complete. Canada has the lead over the United States. Let's send you to Paul Carcaterra with Steve Stenerson, CEO of U.S. Lacrosse. Thank you, Joe. And Steve, as leader of U.S. Lacrosse, hosting this wonderful event, World Championships in 2014 Denver, what are the biggest takeaways for you and your organization? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is how this game is growing dramatically internationally. I mean, so many nations, uh, 38 from six continents, the commitment they've made to be here and be a part of this international footprint is just fantastic. You know, you look at the growth internationally and domestically. U.S. lacrosse is a major player in all that. What are the goals moving forward for U.S. lacrosse? Well, we're a young organization, just 16 years old, and since that birth, we've invested over $130 million into the game's development. It's really started to pay off, and uh, you know, we need to continue to invest in the game's growth. We're building a national headquarters and training center for a U.S. team program that really take us to the next level. Hope to great break ground on that in April of next year. Thank you so much, and wonderful job hosting this event, Steve. Thanks, Paul. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. Q, how about the uh, state of Canada and lacrosse? Well, you know, not as many athletes in Canada play lacrosse. It's only about 100,000 between the ages of 8 and 18. Centered in, in British Columbia and Ontario. Calgary's coming on, though. That's a, that's a good growth area. Field lacrosse, you know, with all the college opportunities out there, it is leading to more and more youth field lacrosse, where you get a lot of, you know, hockey players after the AAA experience, and when they're 16 year, years old, they don't go high in the draft, finding that those guys now turn to lacrosse looking for college scholarships. Team Canada in possession. The United States unbeaten in this tournament and relatively mistake-free. We've seen a few errors from them in the first 22 minutes tonight. Nothing on the board yet for the guys in the white jerseys. U.S. is the faster team, Joe, but they've let Canada dictate pace. Curtis Dixon has the ball. He'll swing it up top for Zach Greer. Outstanding collegiate scorer at Duke and at Bryant in the United States. Greer on the go. Flashy sends that one way wide. The backup belongs to Jeremy Noble. It's a good take by Greer, Joe. He gets to his strong left hand. Well, his shot is wicked. Just evil for a goaltender to try and size up. Flint, one of many University of Denver pioneers who dot the rosters throughout this world championship on a number of different nations. 38 of them descended upon Commerce City, Colorado, about a 10-minute drive from downtown Denver. The whistles blare out. A timeout called by Canada. Team Canada Q getting inspiration in numbers. The coaching staff wearing number 51 in warm-up to express their love for Sean Williams, wife Tamara, and their children, Tucker, Dyson, and Delana. Team also wearing the numbers on their warm-up 17 and 35, prominently displayed to recognize beloved former teammates, both goalies, Chris Sanderson and Kyle Miller. The message throughout is to keep on battling, and Canada has battled hard through this first quarter plus. As we remember Chris and Kyle, members of the World Championship team back in 06, and Chris, who was so terrific for Canada in 2010. This team's playing for a cause bigger than themselves. Today, Chris Sanderson out of Virginia, Baltimore Thunder, Philadelphia Wings, the championship goalie of that 2006 team. I'll never forget his sense of humor, a tremendous teammate, and what a competitor. And I know his wife, Brogan, watching. Gentlemen, to kind of touch on Chris Sanderson and the legacy he left. He was a goalie for Team Canada in 1998, 2002, 2006, and then played in those 2010 World Games while he had a brain tumor. He's so courageous, and one thing Team Canada does to, to keep his legacy alive, every single time they step on the field, someone wears his old jean jacket because Chris embodied everything that was about for Canada lacrosse and, and the passion and the drive, and today, Brody Merrill went to the stadium with the jean jacket on that Chris once wore. Brody Merrill, all-world, best defender in the world. Gary Gate looking on. Of course, so many accolades attached to him throughout a brilliant playing career. Canada, if you're just tuning in with us, a 2-0 advantage, both goals in the opening quarter and both from midfielder Kevin Crowley. So much of this sport 
is hard work and effort. A lot of it is registered and recorded in the ground ball numbers. And to this point, Canada is more than doubling up the United States in that stat column. Hall shimmies against Burns, gets inside. Burns with a good recovery. Schwartz been saying Hall was in the crease. The officials agree it's Team USA ball. That's going to be a staple, Joe, of the Canada offense from the wing, the S dodge, where they're taking away your strong hand and the player tries to get underneath. Quint and Paul weigh in now. How does the United States offense steady itself? I, well, it could be Paul, you go first. Well, I think what they need to do is get into their base motion. What's made them so successful, the leading unit in this entire tournament, has been Paul Rabel breaking the defense down, distributing the rock. However, I look at this Canadian defense. They're slow to go right now. They're making the U.S. offense beat them as Dodgers, not passers. Yeah, I, I think it's been tough to find rhythm and flow, hardly having the ball much in the first quarter. If I were Team USA right now, I'd stack the attack with three Dodgers. Mundorf, Crotty and Pinnell, and I'd ask guys like Matt Vince and Kyle Rubis to cover me one-on-one. -on -one. I think that's where the U.S. advantage is in their attack against Team Canada's close D. Pinnell on the go, the feed inside. There's Lavelle, he scores! Kevin Lavelle. Bingo, this is exactly what I just talked about. A dodging advantage from behind the goal as Pinnell makes mincemeat of his man and draws the double team. You look at it right here, Kevin Lavelle's always been money in the bank, and Rob Pinnell, when this offense really clicks, he's the quarterback and distributor. Watch the faceoff right now. This is a specialized position in lacrosse. First guy to the ball always gets that clamp with these really pinched sticks. You see them jam it in there. I spoke to Jeff Snyder during the break in between quarters. He said they're calling it different today. The refs are not letting them really get after each other and hook their arms when that initial guy gets the clamp. Paul, thanks for the explanation. That's, of course, a huge huge storyline as this game progresses you've got three of the very best and finest face-off men in the world squaring off tonight trying to earn possessions for their squad the captain of team usa kevin lavelle the oldest man on the team he has tallied to cut canada's lead in half five minutes into the second quarter michael evans who called this moment the proudest of his career to wear team usa colors did not play against Australia, out with a, a back injury that's kind of hampered uh, Evans for the last three or four years. Tweaked it during the tournament. Thankfully, the United States has been out to such large leads in games that they can rest players who've been banged up. Cumulatively now in the tournament, including tonight, outscoring their opponents, Team USA, 108 to 28. Greer finding the ball. Good pick there. Greer working around the help from Flint. Abbott is so steady and quick from his short stick defensive midfield position. Three in the white. Picking up 88 in red back behind the cage. Wesley Bird. Still amateur status for Wesley. He'll be a senior at the University of Denver in the spring of 2015. Harrison running with him. Berg hesitates for King, another collegian at Ohio State. Jesse King throws back. Flint. Canada more than doubling up the Team USA in possession time so far. The inside look goes awry, and it's a turnover. A good defensive stand for the Americans. I like that little split dodge by King, kind of a left to left. 6'3", 200 pounds. Currently plays at Ohio State. Will be, he'll be a senior next year. King should be a Tawar time finalist preseason really planted his foot into the ground with some conviction and got to the middle of the field Jesse turned 22 during this tournament you see the turnover story for Team Canada the FIL World Championships this is game 142 the finale over 10 days 38 teams nine divisions these two were the kingpins of the blue division third place game earlier today the Haudenosaunee, the Iroquois Nationals getting the better of Australia the Thompson clan, brilliant in the third place game and England 
down Scotland 15-13 in the fifth place game. Bad turnover by Garrett Poole, and even, even worse one by McIntosh. Pennell comes up for the ground ball for the United States. To the roars of approval from the fans at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Both cases, the blinders went on. The ball gets stuck in your stick, you're going to get stuck on the bench. McIntosh tries to run this up the field. He's, he's got to circle and defer. Don't be afraid to use his goaltender. Be a little more patient. I agree, Q. There's no timer to get that ball upfield in terms of clearing like an American college lacrosse. Use the field. Use the time. Patience. Eight minutes gone by in the second quarter. The United States getting a salvo from Kevin Lavelle. It's 2-1 Canada. Both of the tallies for the guys in the red jerseys coming from Kevin Crowley. Very low scoring. Very much a chess match in this championship final. I think the tempo really favors Team Canada right now. Six on six, lacrosse, half court, long possessions. To the cheers of USA. Lawson, here's the crowd. Fidgets to the outside. Deals for Buchanan. Zone D. Crotty. It's giving the United States fits. Rabel for Buchanan from long range, and that's wide. And I think Dylan Ward will happily face United States shots from 12, 13 yards. Interesting that Canada right now with three short stick middies playing defense and maybe seeing that Randy Mearns wants to call a timeout. When you don't get your good personnel onto the field defensively, zone's often an option. It was either that or Rabel's presence that called the, the zone D. Q, we're in the second quarter now. When they met to open the tournament, the second quarter really turned things in Team USA's favor. And Jordan McIntosh in Canada got off to a terrific start. Jeremy Noble finds Twine, a 3 nothing lead, but Rabel's pass ended up on SportsCenter. Buchanan was great that night without the ball. An eight-goal run and some terrific defense. Took a 3-0 deficit to an 8-3 lead. Game over. The United States only beaten in this tournament ever three times all three decisions all those setbacks to canada rob pinnell began his tournament in fine form and it's just carried right along but we thought dylan ward accounted himself very very well with 18 stops yeah and history says that this canadian team's going to need a, a strong goalie to pull off the upset you go back to 1978 canada lost the pool play game 28 to 4 joe 28 to 4 they lost the pool play and they pull off the upset in the championship Huntley, French, Cockerton, Carm Collins covering Eamon McEnany, and then 2006, Chris Sanderson, John Grant Jr., and, and Gary Gate, the heroes. I recognize a lot of terrific names there. Richie Mead in the middle of the huddle, the head coach for Team USA. Paul Carcaterra was with an earshot. Yeah, solving Dylan Ward has been a big-time issue for Team USA on the offensive end, but Coach Richie Mead not happy with his defensive midfielders. He got after Kyle Harrison and Matt Abbott, saying they need to play more aggressive in the clear, find that next two-on-one. He said, guys, wake up. You are playing half speed. Richie Mead, former coach at the Naval Academy, used a military analogy, metal, M-E-T-L, mission essential task list. Team needed to be tough. It had to have trust. It had to be accountable, and it had to enjoy the process. So far, so very good, but in the final, Canada has stiffened its 2-1. Brody Merrill takes it off the turf and races ahead, those familiar long strides, gracing the field for Canada. He's got that hunched over style. And Joe Fletcher at Loyola kind of emulates that, but a little too much mustard on Rabel's hot dog right there, Joe, the behind the back turnover. U.S. stick work has been not up to par from what we've seen. They seem to be overthinking things on offense, and defensively, their legs don't look like they should quite yet. Good news if you're a Stars and Stripes fan, you're only down one. I actually like the pass by Rabel. I just don't think Kevin Lavelle was ready for it. Then, then it's not a good pass. Why not? He should have caught it. Cameron Holding, the Whitby, Ontario native. A good pass gets caught. Another guy from Whitby, namely Adam Foote. Physical, gritty, stay-at-home defender, almost 20 years in the NHL. Olympic gold medalist for Canada, two-time Stanley Cup champion with Colorado in the Avalanche. He spoke to Team Canada earlier today at the shoot-around at the University of Denver. An inspirational, motivational talk. 
Canada in red, a 2-1 leader, more than halfway through the second quarter. On the go, holding, given a chop there by Kyle Hartzell. Hartzell, whose dad passed away before the team was finalized, had a chance to catch up with Kyle, and he shared with me just how much of a special moment this is for him to be wearing his nation's colors. Unbeaten United States, 5-1 Canada in the World Championship Final. And the Canadians just shrinking this game with extended possessions. Crowley, both of their goals. Feeds it up top for Hall. Nothing developing, nothing materializing. So Adam Jones will be patient. Evans is there. Plays with so much energy, does Michael Evans. Still with Jones, attached to him. Hartzell peeking out on Hall. 8.25 to go in the first half already. Curtis Dixon, who leads Canada in goals in the tournament. Trying to roll back against the stopper, Durkin. Good help coming from Belisle. Curtis Dixon on the feed inside. It gets away from holding, but he recovers. Matthews is lurking behind the net. Jones with the ball, another two-minute-plus possession for Canada. Holding on the go. Abbott with a pass in the lane. Jones, one more. Hall, keep it hot. Dixon fires. Wide Don't be Schwartzman. surprised here if USA calls a defensive timeout. Because they got some tired, tired guys. As you see the guys in white walking over to the bench. A 2-1 lead for Canada in the race for first place. The third place game was played here at Dick Sporting Goods Park over on field 10. And it was Iroquois impressively over Australia. Hardnessonis, Anson Carter had a big day for Australia and started well. But here comes Lyle Thompson. It was very, very hot in the field. The Thompsons combined for 10 points. Randy Stotts was exceptional. And goalie Warren Hill, man, I can't wait to watch him play next year for Syracuse. First time the Iroquois garner that bronze medal, and that's a team with a lot of upside. And being here for the last uh, week and a half, Joe, Lyle Mania, Thompson Mania, has never been stronger. Definitely so, as you look at the Blue Division leaders in terms of points per game. Pinnell was fantastic. Miles Thompson helped to carry Team Iroquois, even when Lyle was away at the ESPYs in L.A. Nine collegiate players on that roster, many from Onondaga Community College. Oakley Thomas, defender, stamped himself as, as, as a big-time player going forward. Jeremy Thompson, Jerome, a terrific leadership, and Steve Bevel and that entire group. Mark Van Arsdale deserve a lot of credit. Everywhere you look, you're seeing the Iroquois Nationals T-shirt. 2018 in Manchester, England. I think they'll take a step even even closer to the goal. 2-1 for Canada. Crowley with both goals. ESPNU brings you coverage of Nike Elite Youth Basketball at Peach Jam. Sunday, it's a semifinal doubleheader. Tune in to see which teams win and advance to the title game. Nike EYBL at Peach Jam, part of ESPN's Summer of Next. Sunday, 9 in the morning, 10.30 a.m. in the morning on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. ESPNU's Summer of Next. From a time of possession standpoint, Canada has held the ball and shrunk this first half, or so it seems. Games like this, Joe, become a poster child for the shot clock. Major League Lacrosse has a 60-second shot clock. This summer, NCAA Rules Committee is going to meet in August, and that's certainly one of their topics on the agenda. I mean, to grow the game internationally, I, I don't think you can put a shot clock in Uganda. But at, but at a world-class level like today, I'm not sure this game is giving the fans what they want to see. Wesley Berg on the sprint. Hesitates, trying to get Kyle Harrison hung up. That's a, that should have been an interference call, Joe. That was a pretty stiff pick from Matthews. He got away with it. Adam Jones 
on the ball for Canada. Going right to the goal here. Tiptoed into the crease, and it's the United States' possession. Excellent help, 21 and white, Mitch Belisle. Jesse Schwartzman looking to ignite this clear. Now the officials are awarding possession. Schwartzman didn't have the ball when the initial whistle was blown. He was kind of fumbling around with it. Whistle blows. Next thing you know, it's on the carpet. And he gives that official on the far side a mouthful for good reason. This has been a major head scratcher in the first half for the United States. It has to be difficult for offensive coordinator Tambroni well, and the high-powered Americans, because yeah. they're not having the ball at all. Well, defensively, what are you going to do? You're sitting back. Are you going to get out and, and, and press and, and make some plays and inject some tempo in this game? Tempo is controlled by the way you play defense, not the way you play offense. Crowley serves for Hall. He'll distribute to McIntosh. Working in. Fires that one off of Schwartzman and hit him in the mask. High in the air. Jesse looks for the rebound. Doesn't field it cleanly. Behind the back. Score! Crowley has the natural hat trick on the Canada side. Kevin Crowley, three goals combined heading in to the World Championship final tonight. He's got the hat trick now. No one ever would deny the skill set. He was Major League Lacrosse 2013 MVP. His skill set is off the charts, and Schwartzman gambles and pays. Steps out of his jurisdiction right there. I mean, come on. Canada owning the U.S. on the ground ball war right now, 16-6. to six. Crowley magically over his shoulder, but Schwartzman, a menelera. That's not, that's not his turf out there, Joe. Gorenlian needs to get this draw for the United States. They need an offensive touch, and Snyder says you will have none. As a goalie in a play like that, as you know, having played at Bowdoin, it's got to be 100% that you can make the play. If there's any percentage that, eh, maybe, 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 you can't make maybe plays when you're the goalie. Quint, it's, it's either me or, or I'm not going. I would have been down on my back after getting drilled in the head like Jesse did seconds prior. Crowley, all three for Team Canada. And many times that rebound comes off the goalie. You're the guy as the goalie who sees it first, you know where it is. So you can get that two-step. He saw it, but it was so high, I think he should have directed his defenders where the ball was, because many of them did not know. Crowley, the former 50-plus goal scorer at Stony Brook, hogging the spotlight for Team Canada. A first half of play that is rapidly going by. Under four minutes, Schwartzman with a good save and a timely one on Flint, but they can't get the rebound. Jones, swing it back up for Wesley Byrne. Burns absorbing the pick of Flint. Curtis Dixon on the inside, working against Durkin, who may be the best defender in the world. Got away with a chop there that stunned Dixon, and the United States finally has the ball. Right hand or wrist, no call, letting him play today. I mean, that's a two-hander, Joe. That is a vicious, vicious check. Durkin played with, plays with what he calls controlled aggression. You make the call at home. Probably caught him between the glove and the elbow pad where there's about two inches of flesh. You look at the Canadian defense right now. Last huddle, I saw Taylor Ray addressing the unit. They'll go into a zone, but he wants to play this two-man game from the U.S. a little differently. A lot of guys try to fight through picks. He actually wants his players to switch, and he said, give up the skip pass. Let's play ball side hard. United States has only taken two shots total in the second quarter. 224 left in it. Stay with us, Paul. Quint and I will review some of the best moments from the World Championship festivities. A 10-day festival here in Commerce City, Colorado. Ned Crotty, who was the hero of 2010 against the Canadians, circles it up, and Brody Merrill will run with him. Man-to-man -man defense by Team Canada. Pennell, double team, timed perfectly, and Canada has the ball back. Brody Merrill. 
In my argument, Joe, I think he's the second best defender in the history of lacrosse behind Dave Petromala, who's on the USA sideline. You think about what Merrill's done collegiately as a pro internationally, all-time leader in ground balls in Major League Lacrosse history. This is a textbook double team. Player turns, you see the back of the jersey. McIntosh does a good job, turns Pinnell, and Merrill times it up, 2-18. Less than 90 seconds to go in the half. From a ground ball standpoint, Canada is dominating. It's helped them to a huge time of possession lead and a two-goal cushion where it matters most. McIntosh off the roll dodge. Wanted to shovel that one, he did. Back behind the cage. Jones will coordinate with Jeremy Noble. Jordan Hall's in no hurry. At the bottom of the screen, more than double the time of possession for Canada in the opening half. 20 minutes of running time per quarter in the World Championships. This is the battle for number one. Hall picked up by Rabel, who has always volunteered to play more defense. Working over Jordan Hall, trying to get the United States the ball back. Hall keeps it, goes to the cage and bowls one wide, backed up by Noble. So tough to dislodge the ball out of these modern pinch sticks with the deep pockets, Rabel. Paul is down on the deck. There's a flag that flew and some harsh words being exchanged around the crease. Jordan Hall is exiting. Rabel now just getting up to his knees. There it was. Yeah, that's an absolute cheap shot. Poor sportsmanship by Hall. Pokes him with the head of his stick. There's no place for that. Absolutely no place for that. This event stands for the highest standards of sportsmanship. Competitive spirit is one thing. But that is, uh, that's ugly. Jordan Hall doesn't appreciate the call. We saw it. The video scoreboard here at Dick's Sporting Goods Park has relayed it. And what's that expression, Q? Don't poke the sleeping bear? Well, that was figuratively and literally what may have just occurred. Rabel, under his own power, making his way to the sideline. In the final half minute of this opening half, here's Paul. Well, the Canadian bench erupted when we saw that jumbo screen replay of Paul Rabel. They think it was a flop. Flop or not, Paul initiated contact. He's supposed to run off the field. What's he doing with his stick? Jabbing it at Rabel, however bad it is. Yeah, I'm just telling the, you what they feel. I, well, you know, the, the point is that, that Hall has no right to take his stick and even touch Paul with it there. Top of the hour time, a lively discussion. Joe Beninati, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our crew. We welcome our viewers on ESPNU and to those watching across Canada on TSN2 to Dick's Sporting Goods Park. The FIL World Lacrosse Championship Final. Team Canada against Team USA. The United States, the top seed, unbeaten in this tournament. Canada just one setback to the U.S. as they battle to control the world. So the standard of contact like that in the indoor game and the outdoor game are different, quite honestly. And that was a that's a field play right there. The field lacrosse, that, that is a foul. Q, I agree with you. I don't think you could pitchfork a guy like that. And if you didn't get him, you didn't get him. And if he embellished, I know where you're coming from. Should have been there in the first it place. Should never have should, been should initiated. It should never have been initiated. That's the risk you run. And now the United States works on the extra man very late in the half. Pass deflected, intended for Lawson, goes to the sideline. It's out of bounds. The officials give the ball to the United States. The time is running here, and it will expire after 40 minutes. Two quarters in the books, and the highest scoring team in the tournament. The United States, averaging almost 18 goals per contest, has been held to just one. Coach, biggest challenge generating offense today. Well, we haven't had the ball that much. You know, they're doing a good job of slowing the game down like we thought. We thought they would, and we, we just mishandled the ball. We've taken some uh, good shots. Their goaltender's playing well. It's going to be a slow game. we got to adapt to it. 
They're up 19-6 in the ground ball category. How do you address that issue? Yeah, we're getting beat up pretty bad on the defensive end of the field. It's cost us three goals. So either we got to wake up a player, it's going to be a long day. Thanks, Coach. All right. The best news is, boys, if you're pulling for the Stars and Stripes, it's only a two-goal deficit. Two quarters complete in the chase for a world championship title. The United States got one from the captain, Kevin Lavelle. They're going to need a whole lot more. Best of from this tournament on the other side of the break. The two giants of international lacrosse, the United States and Canada, have completed the first half of the championship game at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. And while they rest, we get back to work. Joe Beninati, Quint Kesnick flanking Paul Carcaterra, who is remarkably not out of breath after running up from the sideline. Boys, this tournament has kept us hopping for the last 10 days. Left us a lot of lasting images. Which one creates the biggest memory for you? For me, it's the first year nations participating in the World Championships, Joe. When I was playing in 1998, there were only 11 nations participating. Now, 38. You got first year nations like Israel getting six wins. Uganda and China getting their first wins. Culture met lacrosse in these last 10 days. It's been amazing. I've loved the pageantry and, and the colors here. You think about a high intensity competition among nations, but the festival atmosphere, the New Zealand haka, the Scottish bagpipes, the flags, the anthems, Ugandan drums, the camaraderie between nations, how the Iroquois remind us about the game's roots and all through it, tremendous national pride. I was also blown away with that, Quint, but the skill level from some of these emerging nations exceeded my expectations. I thought Israel came to play with some American headliners. Japan always quick and up to the task. And the superstars certainly delivered as well. Paul Rabel became a next level midfielder in terms of his leadership, his skill. Team USA clearly from front to back was the most talented team but we saw a flair for the dramatic from all of these nations. And a, a lasting memory of this week with these athletes will bring back to their native lands and continue to grow the great game of lacrosse. Physicality, camaraderie, Team USA and Team Canada right there at the very end as we are at the half and enjoying some of the best of the best from the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships. The top 20 after a week and a half of struggles through the heat, the lightning and the heavy competition. Nice step up for the team from Scotland uh, advancing into the top 10. Strong showing there in the Iroquois with their best finish ever. It's the first time they've medaled. Congratulations to the Nationals. If you look from 11 through 20, programs like Italy and Switzerland, the Czech Republic and Finland, I did that game yesterday. They're ready to take it to another level in terms of the European competition. We watched Switzerland down Netherlands on ESPN3. They were excited like they won it all. Highlights from our final coming up soon. The United States and Canada have squared off in the World Championship final seven times prior. In all of those games, both teams have been in double figures. You'll be hard pressed to get there today. 3-1 Canada after one half. Highlights to come like this from Kevin Crowley. Welcome to the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. We're halfway home in the title game, game number 142. United States fans are nervous. Canada has a 3-1 lead after two quarters. Joe Beninati and Quint Kesnick with you. And Quint, if you're Team USA, what kind of adjustments do you have to make? Well, tempo is dictated by two things in lacrosse. First of all, the ball. Uh, and winning ground balls has got to be a point of emphasis for Richie Meade. They trailed in that category 19-8. to The second is the style of defense you play. And so far this game, US, they've been kind of passive on the ball. They've allowed for long Canadian possessions, and those have been like body punches us has played much too much defense there haven't been very many scoring highlights in the opening half but canada controlled the pace and tempo yeah jordan hall off a really great set pick by cameron holding finds crowley loose ball in the defensive zone schwartzman makes a tactical error and comes out the usa goal pinnell draws two on the iso and then finds lavelle inside and once again schwartzman High rebound off his head. He sees that like a wide receiver in football. He's got to either get that at its highest point or not even move out of the crease because the mistake yields another Crowley goal. He's got the hat trick. 
Thule runs himself into a double team. Rabel, Lavelle saw that. That was just an over-aggressive pass, too much mustard on that hot dog. And then watch Pinnell turn himself into an awesomely timed double team by Brody Merrill, the future Hall of Famer. Through 40 minutes, the shots, it's hard to believe only 11 combined for the United States. And the time of possession just leaps off the page at you with respect to shooting in this tournament. Look at the volume that the Stars and Stripes have manufactured, but not so far tonight, Paul Carcaterra. That's right, Joe. I just caught up with Randy Mearns, head coach of Team Canada. I asked him, what are you doing defensively? He said, it's magic. Taylor Ray, their defensive coordinator, has the best game plan. And what does that entail? Well, getting the ball out of Rob Pinnell stick as quickly as possible for our team USA I heard coach Jeff Tambroni say we got to get back to our motion offense spin the ball around movement with people United States ended the second quarter with possession on the extra man they begin the third just like that with Kevin Lavelle circling it up for Rob Bunnell Bunnell has been blanketed by Brody Merrill and the red clad Canadian defenders throughout one measly goal for the United States in the opening half it came from Lavelle Lawson off the skip gets inside plays back for Pinnell over the top he bluffed it Merrill right there waiting Rabel will skip a man Holman Pinnell fire from Buchanan a kick save for Dylan Ward Lavelle earns the brown ball we're back to six on six United States extra man one of just a, a few facets that they haven't done well in the pool play only coming out of there with 23% they had five extra man goals in their first six games. Rabel had four of them. He didn't pull the trigger in that last exchange. Pinnell gets a step and fires high. He finally got the jump on Merrill. Well, I, I think that's where the U.S. advantage is. You put your speed dodgers, Mundorf, Crotty, and Pinnell on offense. I don't think Canada has three cover guys that can match up with all three. Rabel fires. That one's too tall. Can you wear Brody Merrill out in the second half? Well, Matt Vince you can wear out. Merrill you can try to wear out. I think the USA dodging advantage is with their attack. Pinnell goes again. Feeds inside. LaBelle scores! Kevin Crowley three. Kevin LaBelle two. Earlier in this possession, we saw a monster ground ball by Rob Pinnell that gave Team USA offense another look. They weren't getting those in the first half, but Pinnell's been masterful at breaking defenders down at X and scoring on low angle shots. This time, he becomes the point guard and dishes it to Kevin Lavelle. I think that was an overzealous double team by the Canadian defense. He talked about how Randy Mearns wants to flush the ball out of Pinnell's stick. That wasn't what Pinnell was not a threat to score there. They sent the double. They had poor backside coverage. No second slide on Kevin Lavelle. Coaching staff and teammates refer to him as the consummate professional. Kevin Lavelle. With both tallies for the United States, Greg Gerenlian with a much-needed face-off win. Jesse Schwartzman is in the cage for Team USA, backed up by Drew Adams. Both netminders have performed admirably in this World Championship tournament. Here comes Gerenlian, leaving it off to Lavelle, the 32-year-old upstate New Yorker. He and his dad will be running the Lake Placid tournament, as always. Lavelle out of the Albany Academy, coached by Gary Danola. His son Jordan played at Navy. Merrill Thompson. Another. Oh, yeah. And Mike Lavelle, to our time winner. Terrific names. Okay. Mike, Mike was on the team in 2010. Kevin was an alternate the last time the United States came home as the world champ. Nobody I was happier for when this team was announced. And Kevin Lavelle twice tried out, didn't make it, showed a lot of per perseverance stayed in the game and, and finally was rewarded and now is the solo captain of this team elected by his peers team usa looking for the tying tally just shy of the four minute mark in the third quarter zone d mundorf and crotty and thule connecting the dots on the outside mundorf a great look lavelle he put that one wide of the cage so often he is automatic from in tight there. He just missed. Dylan Ward says, let's slow it down. Ward, among the tournament leaders in save percentage, came in just about 63%. Left side of your screen, this is the tail end. Good stick check by Vince there, Joe. Matt Vince, 48 in red, 32-year-old defender, outdoors. Indoors, he plays goal top goalie 2010 and 11 and 
National Lacrosse League, Rochester. Teacher and high school coach in St. Catharines. As usual, Canada and the United States putting on a good show and a championship finale, but this one is so different from the seven prior meetings they've played in the gold medal game. Often high scoring. This one is ultra low scoring. 3-2 for the guys in red. Kevin Crowley, 21 in the red, has them all for Canada. Long possessions. Referees have been slow to apply the keep it in call. Hall for Curtis Dixon. Tucker Durkin is right there to stalk him. Approaching the five-minute mark in the third. Earlier today, England winning in the fifth place game. They beat the Scots. Ben McAllister, maybe his final world championship performance. 13 saves in the goal for the Brits. Team filled with characters. I had the opportunity to spend a whole day with their team, watch them practice. Real life starts on, uh, on Monday, I guess. Inside look, Crowley again! Kevin Crowley! Very interesting that Cameron Holding, Grand Valley State, is running offensive shifts in this ballgame. He's been a transitional player all week. Here he is, draws the eyes of the defense, and Crowley just flashes to the middle, catch and finish. We get to meet Kevin Crowley with this bio blast brought to you by Sector Spider ETFs. Number one overall pick indoors, number one overall pick outdoors. I believe he's still the only man to ever be that. 232 career points at Stony Brook. Tawar Tan finalist, midi of the year, first team All-American, six foot four righty. A little quiet in pool play. Randy Mern said, we're going to put some air in his tires. Just needs a little confidence, and it's worked. He put helium in the tires. Chris Eck won the draw. Canada doubling up the United States as we approach the midway mark of the third quarter. Brendan Mundorf for so many years in the Outdoor Pro League, Major League Lacrosse, a hero for the Denver Outlaws. Major League Lacrosse getting back to its regular season schedule. Reigning champion Chesapeake Bayhawks eliminated from playoff contention. Wow, they got five guys on Team USA. Lawson, feet on the outside, looking for Buchanan. Bumped into there. Rabel, back to Buchanan, fires, and it was Ward getting a chunk as it's deflected off target. That's the combination for the midfield, Rabel to Buchanan, they dominate in Major League Lacrosse for the Cannons. Here they come again, Paul, stopped there by Ward, who crossed over just in the nick of time. Ground ball for Coates, he overruns it. Team USA has it unsettled, Rabel going to the cooker, stopped by Ward again! Brilliant performance from 37 in red. He blew up his senior year at Bellarmine, 66%. That was back in 2012. Was a third-team All-American. He's a great indoor goalie. Says he's got to be a little more patient in the field game, and this is just intuition. Trying to read the body language of Paul Rabel. Great movement of the hips, flexibility. Says the better I get, the less I stop thinking about the little things. Just focus on the ball. Nothing else matters. He had 18 saves, Q, in the first meeting against the United States, a three-goal loss. He has a 20-save game on his resume against Bill Tierney's Pioneers a mile high back in 2013 when he was a collegian. McIntosh turns it. Curtis Dixon around the pick from Flint. Jones keeps it hot for Jeremy Noble. Lee Zinks right there playing about 25 miles or 25 minutes from his front door. Canada only one shot in this quarter, nearly nine minutes old. The United States with eight. Patiently trotting with the ball here, Curtis Dixon. Abbott right there in stride with him. Dixon explodes to the goal, shovels, and scores! Curtis Dixon! Let's go! 71 in red, they call him Superman in Canada because he takes flight from behind the cage and from a low angle shooting standpoint. The three guys in the world are their best. Rob Pinnell, Lyle Thompson, 
and Curtis Dixon. They got Dixon on a shorty behind the goal, and there's no help before goal line extended. That is a breakdown of communication and scheme for Team USA. And Schwartzman locks up on the post, Joe. That, that, that shot was telegraphed low to low. Schwartzman is not seeing the pill right now. As opposed to Dylan Ward, who is laser locked on it in the cage for Canada. Team Canada's largest lead on the day. Eck with a violation. Schneider and the Canadians have the ball again. And now you can sense in the stands at Dick's Sporting Goods Park, American faithful are getting nervous. Now this is the tightness that a team like Team USA, when we met with these players, Paul Rabel said, we must deal well with the pressure of being Team USA and being favored. They've handled that well all tournament long, not tonight. Paul, continue with thoughts on Paul Rabel and his maturation process. Well, I think he's always been that alpha male dodging midfielder, but over the last few years, he's really bought into the team game. He's become one of the best passers I've ever seen from the midfield position. He's not pressing either. It's not about Paul Rabel. It's about his legacy as a winner. He's already cemented himself as the best, maybe one of the best international midfielders ever. He's going to have some get up and go chores in front of him if the United States is to rally against Canada tonight. Just a three-goal deficit and still 29 minutes plus of regulation time with which to work. Now, this game has been played to the script for Team Canada. Oh, exactly, Joe. All the factors, ground balls, face-offs, goaltending, possessions, shooting percentage. Hall keeps it moving. Crowley has a handful. That's his fifth. Five tallies on the day, boys. Kevin Crowley has awakened at just the right moment. Three goals in pool play. Great feed here. Jordan Hall with the Cameron holding pick. Crowley in the right place in the right time in that. And twice now, Schwartzman has come out and misplayed balls. And Crowley, the, the innate sense to scoop that up and trigger it. Holden picks up the assist as Crowley cuts the crease. And a similar goal right here. America ball watching. Canada plays the substitution game as Merrill stays on the field. Eck is face guarding him. Five on five, their slide packages change. Crowley capitalizes. Such a lonely feeling for Jesse Schwartzman in the goal for Team USA. Q, we were here in advance of this World Championship tournament. We saw teams working out, practicing in Vail. We came here in time to watch Canada scrimmage several times at the University of Denver, and each and every time we saw the Canadians, our eyes were just gravitate to 21. And all of a sudden, he has burst onto the score sheet the way we thought in the biggest game of all. Well, that says something about him to being able to shrug off a pretty quiet pool play games. Says something about the coaching staff, too. Pushing the right buttons, Joe. You know, some guys are, some guys can be motivated by not negative feedback, but come on, Beninati, you know, you're better than this. And other guys need, need the arm on the back, they need the hugs, and whatever was said between Randy Mearns and Kevin Crowley has worked to a T. Now this USA coaching staff have to come up with similar answers. Let's find out what Dave petromala has been saying. Paul? He was livid, and it all comes down to he said to his defense, we're not winning the one-on-one -on -one battles, that's why we're getting our butts kicked. And if you look at this Canadian team, they're getting all these assisted goals, and it's a result of the initial breakdown of a one-on-one -on -one inability to stop the guys in red. Quint, we talked about it all the time. If Canada can break the defense down, they have the finishers. Deadly, deadly finishers. In, in, in the pool play match, no one could run by their man. They're setting better picks. They look a little faster. The day off yesterday did them well. And they're just more explosive with the ball. United States fighting for possession off the faceoff. Holman sprinting along with Rubish. It's still down on the turf, and it comes up for Chris Eck. The faceoff man delivers, and he gets drilled to the sideline, and it will be Canada ball. U.S. coaching staff Kevin Cassis showing his displeasure with that call. Thought it was from the rear. Things are things have heated up. You make the call at home. Kevin Cassis, the former captain of the gold medal winning entry in 2010 for the United States. Chris Eck, the face-off man who was cut from that 2010 team. And for four years since, 
wore the same Team USA issue shorts to sleep so that he would go to bed and wake up every morning reminded about what was going to be important to him in 2014. He and Gorenlian have been awesome, but Canada has the upper hand, their largest lead and three goals in succession. Fans getting into it with a USA chance. Wesley Berg on the sprint. Kyle Harrison right there with her. Former All-American out of Johns Hopkins University. Good move by Curtis Dixon. The big ball fake and the sidewinder was eaten by Mitch Belial. Tricky play here in the corner. Playing man ball with it. Dixon using his feet very well. Kicked it to Greer. Canada has the possession and Dixon again is down and ailing. Big hit by Mitch Belial. Big hit. He had ahead of steam. Greer thought about it. 6.40 to go in the third quarter. Canada has opened up a 6-2 lead. Dixon subs off. This ball stops within inches of the end line, and you're blindsided there. That's where, as a teammate, third man in often makes the play, but you got to be yelling. You're Curtis Dixon's teammate. you got to be yelling. Look out. Curtis Dixon has a seat on the Canada bench. Jesse King gets in there, 92 in red. Working off the face dodge, rolling back for Greer. Wesley Bird, good moves on the perimeter. Greer in no hurry, finds Matthews. Strong left-handed player, swims on Abbott, goes to the goal one-handed, off the outside of the post, and Schwartzman. Rebound down, United States needs possession, they don't get it. Matthews keeps it hot, the pass is bad for Noble, and it's a turnover to Team USA. Sensational work off the carpet, one pass too many. ESPNU brings you coverage of Nike Elite Youth Basketball at Peach Jam. Sunday at 3, it's the championship game. Tune into all the action, two teams battling for the title. Nike EYBL at Peach Jam, part of ESPNU's Summer of Next, Sunday, 3 p.m. on ESPNU. 6-2 for Canada, five and a half to go. You're seeing the stats of this game at the bottom of your screen. The superpowers of lacrosse squaring off once again in a championship finale. This is the eighth time. Buchanan for Seaball. Seaball run to the ditch there by McIntosh. A great check, and Canada has the ball. Merrill. So reliable on the ground ball. He lost possession. The feet inside. The whistles blare before Lavelle can pull the trigger. And the goalkeeper, Dylan Ward, is down and hurts. USA presses off the turnover. All three attackmen crash the D in goalie. There's no outlet for Merrill. And fans here unhappy with the whistle. Injured player. You see Merrill gets tripped up by Seaball. No call right there. He's undercut. The right knee is Seaballed in in, into the uh, left shin and knee of Dylan Ward. USA had an advantage coming out of that scrum. Pinnell scoops it up. They're potentially going to score a goal there. Very interesting that the whistle was blown. As they tend to Dylan Ward, who has been marvelous. His backup is warming up heatedly, Brennan Donville who plays collegiately at Cornell in the United States. Ward appears like he's going to be able to shake it off. Paul Carcaterra has this on Curtis Dixon. Well, Curtis Dixon right now in excruciating pain. It's his right shoulder, Joe. And you look at Brennan Donville who enters the game. He's a left-handed goalie with a righty, Dylan Ward. Looks like he's okay. He'll be back in shortly. Dylan Ward jogging off. Donville steps in, the 20-year-old from Oakville, Ontario, a suburb of Toronto. By rule, Ward must come off the field. Donville started for Cornell this year in their first four games. 4-0 record, but only 47%. Hill School in Philly. Jason Donville, his dad and mom, Jane, are here. They're huge benefactors of this Canadian lacrosse team. There you see Dylan upper right of your screen anxiously awaiting his chance to get back in unofficially we have him for only five saves but those five have been really good Donville leading the clear now for Canada on target to McIntosh 
And the Canadians settle in six on six with four minutes to go in the third. Not easy coming off the bench, Joe, to settle clear like that to keep your composure and find the right guy. Just tuning in with us, it has been a magical night for Kevin Crowley all of a sudden. Crowley, whose numbers were very low by his standards, five goals on the evening. He's cashed in five of seven shots. Kevin LaBelle has the only two goals for high-powered Team USA. The highest scoring team in the tournament has been blanketed. Jordan Hall working to the outside with Holden. It was Richie Mead, the head coach of Team USA, who said he was so interested to see the chess match between the coordinators unfold. At this stage, Joe, four-goal lead, USA staying in their base package. They've chosen not to inject tempo in this game by playing the ball hard. Stall warning now. Canada has to keep it inside that restraining line. Jordan Hall jogging with Dave Lawson. So explosive has Lawson been in this tournament, but I've hardly called his name to, to pull the trigger once tonight. Lawson, who had four in the semifinals against Australia. Matthews, the slowdown tempo continues, and the fans aren't happy. Matthews tried to wrap it on Schwartzman. He sent it wide. We saw Dixon pull off a similar go goal. I cannot believe that Team USA is not supporting that matchup. Mark Matthews against the Shorty. Hall has Lawson, another short stick defensive midfielder there in this posture at least. Hall waiting. Time ticking. 20 minutes running quarters in the FIL World Lacrosse Championships. Canada's going to try to get take this possession into the fourth quarter, Joe. No timer on. No 60-second shot clock. There is a stall warning in effect on the Canadians. But unless you press out, Matthews will happily stay there with his team guarding a four-goal lead. He drives in. Here comes a double from Durkin. Hatchet man's right there on the end line. Got away with one on the end line. Hall. Picked up again by Lawson. Team Canada frustrating the United States. Hall off the swim. Holding is next. First time in the World Championships. GM Dave Huntley of Canada said intentionally they went young with this team, thinking that the college players were as professional as the pros. Under 90 to play in the third. Fans not happy with the tempo. Didn't pay money for tickets to see a player stand on the end line. It's up to the defense to inject tempo in this ball game. Giving up shots here might be the best thing for Team USA's defense. You got to get out and play the ball. Send a double team. You're down four. How long can you afford to stand around like white cones? Burns not initiating anything pressure-wise for Jordan Hall. He'll happily stay there. Curtis Dixon watching from the bench. Kevin Crowley has possession. Crowley with the five goals, an explosion for him. It started back in the opening quarter. He had one more before the half. He's got two in quarter three. Paul, this is mind-numbing for the fans in the stands. Without question, and Team Canada just following orders. Randy Mearns telling his guys, go behind the cage. And like Quinn said, if Team USA isn't going to pressure Canada's offense, why wouldn't you do this? I agree. You can't blame Canada. They're trying to win this ball game and spoil the party for the United States on home soil. Holding guns it high. Final seven seconds in the quarter. Now Canada moves aggressively, holding again. He scores! Oh, is that a crippler? That long of a possession, and then you stick it. Canadian fans love it. Amazing how this team has utilized Cameron Holding this week. Defensive midfield. A transitional midfielder in the indoor game out of Grand Valley State. Are you kidding me? Playing a ton of offense today. It will require a major recovery for the United States to rally back. Holding stings the corner. Canada is in control after three.
Cross Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you. The beautiful Rocky Mountains, a mile high are we in Denver, specifically Commerce City, Colorado, about 10 minutes away from downtown. Team Canada is threatening to spoil the party. They have a 7-2 advantage over the United States after 60 minutes. Joe Beninati and Quint Kesnick flanking University of Denver head coach Bill Tierney. And Bill, we've had a great time here for the last 10 days. How has this terrific event been received in the Denver community? Well, first of all, Joe, thanks to ESPN and all your people. You guys have done a yeoman's <laughs> job. All your announcers, this has been wonderful for, the, for Denver as a city, the state of Colorado, and for the growth of lacrosse. And it's just been amazing. Coach, for you, uh, Pioneer Pride has been on display. It had nearly nearly a dozen athletes competing for a variety of nations. Describe what that means to you and the program. Well, it, it, it really is an interesting thing to see your players who have played for you be representing their countries to assistant coaches who uh, with Thailand and Canada. And so it's uh, it's been really great, Quinn. Good news for Canada with Dylan Ward back between the pipes. 20 minutes left in regulation time. Team Canada in the red on top of Team USA. Kevin Crowley, the goal scoring hero, in a game in which the United States, the highest scoring team in the tournament, has been supremely frustrated by a slow down tempo and terrific defense from the guys in the red jerseys. The United States has possession. Coach Tierney will remain with us in the booth for a while enjoying how this one unfolds and coach in your own right now wait a minute you're playing in a super masters event tell us about it <laughs> well uh, i got invited to uh to play by some of my old college teammates with a group that had been together and uh, uh won a won a over 60 world championship today with the cloud splitters well done <laughs> dylan ward with another super save on seaball Tommy King, a member of that squad from uh, Eagle Vale. Coach, okay, your Team USA, you, you've looked invincible throughout this tournament, just dominating. Things aren't going your way tonight. What do you got to do to turn this thing around? Well, you know, they've got the best athletes in the games, Quint. They, they, they're just going to have to start chasing, as you're seeing them do now. It's, uh, uh, you know, Canada and uh, Matt Brown, uh, who's my assistant head coach at, uh, at Denver, has done a great job of slowing the pace, taking advantage of, of the rules that, uh, that allow you to slow the pace. He's got the young men playing really smart lacrosse, and, you know, uh, Ward in the goals made a lot of great saves. Jesse's playing well as well, but... The pace has just been frustrating for U.S. because they're playing a little scared now and they're trying not to make mistakes. The tail end of the third quarter as this one is ripped by Matthews. Another goal. Makes it 8-2 and 5 in succession for the Canadians. We got a pioneer scoring that goal. Mark Matthews, Bill Tierney had the luxury of coaching the lefty sniper. The guy on the dishing end, Cam Flint, well, he coached him too, and the Canadian offense now has the U.S. defense on their heels. They're out of their base D, and they're chasing. Another example there, as Flint is curling strong right-handed, as you see uh, the Canadian connection, the Pioneers, Matthews is mirroring him with a left-hand cut, about you know 10 yards north of goal line extended. Snyder wins a draw going right to the cooker. Jeff Snyder, the MVP of 2006, the last time Team Canada was victorious in a world championship on home turf in London. They are 17 minutes away from foiling the United States' efforts to defend the crown, which they earned four years ago in Manchester. Interestingly enough, the 2018 games will be in Manchester, England for the fourth time in that city as Randy Burns asks for time. Just shy of the three-minute mark in the fourth quarter. We'll make a break for it. Coach Tierney remains with us in the booth. We'll get you back where they are happy for Canada. Canada has the advantage 8-2 to two with 17 minutes to go in regulation time and Bill Tierney, University of Denver head coach, is with us in the booth. Paul Carcaterra, how have you sized up the efforts of Dylan Ward in the cage tonight for Canada? He's been absolutely ridiculous. He comes from the best goalie town in all of Canada. Orangeville, that's where the legendary Chris Sanderson was schooled. Kyle Miller 
They're watching down on him right now, and he has a performance for the ages. Dylan out of Bellarmine, old uh, mates in the ECAC with you, Coach. What was it like his senior year when he kind of came out of nowhere and, and, and blew up? Well, he was fantastic. I, in a game that we played against him, that we had to beat him in overtime, he had over 20 saves. Uh, he used to wear really baggy uh, sweats, so he couldn't score between the legs either. But he's just a heck of a kid. You can't figure him out. Sometimes he's high, sometimes he's low, sometimes he splits. So he does all sorts of different things. Not a bad trade for a goalie. <laughs> there you go. He's definitely riddled the United States efforts. Canada, in terms of time of possession, more than double that of the United States in the game overall. And beating them by six now in quarter number four. Joe, that timeout a little early in the fourth quarter by Coach Burns, though, strictly to deal with the pressure that you're seeing here on the perimeter. Bernhardt looking for the takeaway against Zach Greer. Greer hiding behind the cage. Bernhardt right there to rough house with him. Matthews, the last man on the board for Canada on a night when Kevin Crowley has gone berserk for five tallies. Wesley Berg runs to the alley. As Berg looks for a flip, any helping cross to assist. Bill Tierney's in the booth with us, and Bill, put yourself on the USA sideline. What are you asking of your troops now? Well, you know, it's 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 not what they want to be. You know, they've got to spread out. They've got to press you all over the place now, and that kind of falls right into the Canadians' hands. Without any uh, rules as far as shot clocks, it's going to be tough. Crowley moving it quickly. Jones, pump fake. Zink right there to take it away. Puts it down on the turf. Whistle here. Possession for the United States, much needed. As Zink was getting in the grill of Jeremy Noble and vice versa. Coach, I got the feeling this game's going to spark some debate in terms of rules. And the NCAA Rules Committee goes to work in August. What are you anticipating from the group this summer? We are anticipating, hopefully, a shot clock. And uh, that would change, change the game a bunch. But you have to be careful as well. As you know, shot clock can bring things like tight zone defenses and things like that. So, uh, But I think it's time to uh, for the game to catch up to... Uh, to the, to the skill of the game and, and get it moving quicker and uh, you know coaches are still going to coach and, and make adjustments but it's time to take uh, that, that kind of vagueness out of the timer on call game plans for the Canadians at both ends have been masterful tonight Ken Crotty and the rest of the white clad Americans solve it zone on D right now Pinnell very quiet Holman from deep off the crossbar the ricochets 30 feet high and flagged down by Lawson. Past the five minute mark of the fourth, he runs by Dylan Roy. Playing catch with Crotty, the hero four years ago. Up top for Purnell. Inside look, Lavelle was stymied. And back comes McIntosh for Team Canada with a whistle blaring out and possession going back to Team USA. Got away with a little delay there, the way they roll the ball. Potential dangerous restart. Avoided. Both of these teams were in the top five in terms of goals against average among the 38 that were involved in these world championships. Great look inside for Holman just off of his cross, and Dylan Ward clamps down on it. Bill, did you ever think we'd hear the day where we said there would be 38 teams in a world championship? Uh, it's fantastic, Joe. When I coached in 98, I think there were 11, and it's just... Uh... You know, the FIL people have done an amazing job. It's just so great to see the whole atmosphere outside tonight before the game. All the teams and the countries. It's just uh, what a credit to the sport and all the people working so hard to expand it throughout the world. David Earl being worked over by Tucker Durkin. Sends it to the corner for Adam Jones. Adam will turn 25 the end of this month. He'd like to do so as a world champion. Brilliant earlier in the tournament in the Canadian win over England. He had five tonight. The five goal performance has come from Kevin Crowley Give the ball to Team USA. It's time for them to get up and go needing six to tie with 13 minutes to play So many of those international teams getting help from former college and high school coaches guys You know pretty well coach like Fred AC and Joe Cuso and Jimmy Casper my, uh, my sister coach Dylan Sheridan coached the Thailand Dylan, team. Yeah. Coach Brown is on the sideline here with Canada, so it's uh, it's really great to see uh, the American coaches doing all they can to help the game become great throughout the world. It's uh, 
It's such a thrill. Rabel on the move, back behind the cage, Pinnell, circle it up up top. Seaball fires, another stop. Coates looking for the rebound. With help from Brody Merrill, it's Guess Canada's who? ball. Gamble running away from the pressure and down the alley for Crowley to clear. You got a hot goalie and a big lead. You sit back in the zone, you give this one up. Love the way he sets up wide, being tall. He's six foot four, plays indoor goal. He says it's basically the same stance. Instead of this stick up in the box area, it's down between his legs, but he, he can go pipe to pipe pretty quickly. Free ball there was goosed by Merrill. It's a turnover to Abbott. Unsettled. Holman creating with Lavelle, who has the only two goals tonight for the United States. Pinnell thought about it, took his eyes off the ball. Sends it back out there for Rabel. Abbott will circle it up. Off the split dodge. No shooting room for him. Rabel, who was the best player in the tournament in 2010. Forced back. Playing catch with Buchanan. Fire and score! It's Pinnell! Zone defense and a tired zone defense. You don't see any kind of presence on the perimeter. Not much to shoot at there, Coach. Yeah, that was a heck of a shot from a tough angle from Rob Pinnell. And, uh, you know, you could put that one in. You just uh, give him credit. Subject of this bioblast brought to you by Sector Spider ETFs. Pinnell, the Tawaraton Award winner out of Cornell. Dazzling numbers as an amateur. And a phenomenal performance against Team Iroquois during pool play. Seven goals, the second most ever by a member of the U.S. men's national team, trailing only that of the nine of Pat O'Mealy against Australia in 74. That's 40 years ago, folks. We crush in on the draw. Snyder won't give up against Gorenlian. Gorenlian looks like he has the advantage here, but look at how Jeff uses his core strength and leans in. You don't see these extended faceoffs in NCAA lacrosse. And a withholding violation. Somewhere along the line there, they probably said to Grenlian, get it out, get it out, get it out. He had established control. Or maybe off ball, it was a push. It was an off ball push on the wing guy there, Q. And Coach Tierney, 15, 20 years ago, I know when you had guys like David Morrow, you'd send him out taking the ball away. With the U.S. not having to take away defenders like in the past, it could be an issue in the fourth quarter. It definitely is. This is their strength. It's, it's playing the core defense and the tight defense, but, uh, you know, we'll see. They got a takeaway there. Much needed. Didn't do anything with it at the offensive end. And it'll be Vince strolling back ahead. Your personnel is very, very important right now if you're Team Canada. You have to put your fleet-footed midfielders on the field. Maybe some of your, even your two-end guys who can run away from trouble. This is a smart move. David too. Earl's probably one of the guys that they're going to really rely on here because he can go both hands and really get down the alleys and run away from people. The ball's played to King. Matthews working it to the outside. We've not seen much of Curtis Dixon, who's been nicked a time or two in this championship game. U.S. can double here when seven in red coats subs off. So if you're Paul Rabel, 99, you're kind of like a free safety. Jeremy Noble going to the cooker. No shot. Canada maintains its discipline and its keep away possessions. There was one at the end of the third quarter, coach. Five minutes worth of possession. And then, oh, by the way, a goal from Cam Holding. It was a backbreaker. You know, this kind of, uh, these kind of rules, if you play, you know, if you play them into your hands and take advantage of them, can really, as we're seeing, make a slow, slow game and uh, can help the underdog. Look out, Schwartzman's trapped out of the cage. Ball is still free. Wonderful hustle there by Tucker Durkin. As he's pounded in the corner by Flint, the United States has the ball. Schwartzman throws a rocket to midfield. Bernhardt brings it ahead. Eight minutes left for the United States to rally. They trail by five. Pinnell, the last goal scorer, is going to the cage. Inside look, shovel shot, score! Bernhardt! U.S. had transition. Pinnell had some options across the field. 
He had numbers in a trailer, but he slow played it. Bernhardt does a great job sprinting box to box, plants himself in the middle. That's trust in your long pole cue. And when you have a guy like Jesse Bernhardt, who's accustomed to running the field for four years at Maryland, you put him in those spots. Twice an All-American with the Terrapins. Hailing from the great state of Florida, Bernhardt has made it a four-goal game. Who gets this possession? Eck has the clamp, comes up with it, lost it. Seaball gets away with a shove there at midfield and comes up with a ball for the United States in right. Sense the urgency all of a sudden here. United States so dominating through blue division play. Putting up 21 against Japan, 20 against England, 22 against Australia in the semifinals. Held to just four at the moment. Buchanan ready to go. Rabel from the top. Paul has not been able to unload that Cracker Jack shot today. Merrill steps out in his path. Buchanan swings it back behind the cage. Mundorf inside. Lavelle. Score! It's your captain. It's your leader. And it's got to be your guy in the zone in the fourth quarter because the outside shooters now are loosening up this Canadian zone defense. You got to go inside. A little communication issue for the Canadian defense. You see two players turn to each other and says, that was your guy. No, that was my, your guy. And Canada's got to settle down now. That early timeout has only left him one, and the momentum has greatly shifted here. And you see Randy Mearns, uh, the look on his face saying, you know, do I use it now? Do I hold it? Right, holding it for possession is always tough, but uh, that's what they had to do before. And down to one, and the momentum swings a little bit, but... Snyder is doing a heck of a job out here against the two American guys. Jordan Hall moving it quickly. Jeremy Noble sent it wide. That voice you just heard, University of Denver head coach Bill Tierney, kind enough to stop by with us for the fourth quarter. ESPNU's continuing coverage of the World Championships. Timeout. Timeout called by Team USA. Coach, we sure do appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Quinn. I might rank you number one in the preseason, Coach. I hope you're okay <laughs> with that. <do> that. <laughs> Let's see how this one transpires. 5-15 of exciting lacrosse to come. Down the stretch in the World Championships. United States staging a gutsy rally now. Canada has the advantage 8-5. It was 8-2 early in the fourth. Canada in the zone and extended possession. Pinnell finds a sliver of space. And there's Rob again missing to Jesse Bernhardt from Lake Brantley, Brantley, Florida in transition. Lavelle, a great cut against Mundorf. And all of a sudden, the guys in white are flying around. Paul Carcaterra on the emotion of this event. Things have changed. I saw a loose Canada team for three quarters. Right now, things are a little tighter. In the defensive huddle for Team USA, Coach Dave Petromello, the defensive coordinator, said, let's get Durkin on the ball for a double. But watch the delayed sub. That was Canada's escape the last time when they doubled the ball. They'll sub the guys through the box and give them some breathing room. See Jesse Schwartzman covering a man here, looking for the ground ball against McIntosh. Used his body well, throws it to the front. Score! Wesley Bird! No goal? No goal. No goal. The officials, Campbell, Coulomb, Clark, and Davidson. Taking that one away from Canada. Diving's legal. Looked to me as if the ball was in the net, and then he landed in the crease. International, you're allowed to dive. Matt Abbott in possession. Team USA looks to continue its rally. Was that knee on the line? Or, or the elbow? Yep. Rabel taking charge now. Lavelle has the hat trick for the United States. Rabel on the sweep. Floats it inside. Buchanan just deflected away. Rubish and Merrill there defensively. Joe Beninati, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra with you. Five minutes under that, remaining in Dick's Sporting Goods Park. The World Lacrosse Championships on the line. Lavelle feeds. Buchanan doesn't pull the trigger. 
Seaball sifting it back behind the cage for Pinnell. Gets the jump, turns, he got stuffed by Dylan Ward. Ward's magnificent night continues. Rabel was, or rather, Merrill was checked. He lost the ball. It'll go back to Paul Rabel in the United States. Think about all the training, all the time you put in. It comes down to these last three and a half minutes as you see another timeout by Team Canada. You got some very, very fatigued men playing their seventh game in nine days at altitude and extreme heat. A few moments ago, Randy Mearns, the head coach for Canada, to the right of your screen, believed that the Canadians had some insurance here from Wesley Berg. It was overturned. Uh, in, in my estimation, that, that is a goal in international lacrosse. In college, he leaves his feet and lands in the crease. It's no goal. But the rules are different here. I was field level, and I had a great look at that in terms of the ball crossing the goal line before he landed in the crease. Just like you said, in college, Q, you can't land in the crease when you leave your feet. In international play, you can. That ball crossed the line before he landed. We are enjoying watching the best of the best in this World Lacrosse Championship final. We have the all-world team announced. Rob Pinnell and Paul Rabel, Tucker Durkin representing the Stars and Stripes. And right now, the tournament MVP, the Canadian keeper, his first experience in a world championship, and Dylan Ward has been marvelous. Think about this Canadian team, guys like Dylan Ward, indoor goalie growing up, makes the transition to field lacrosse, attends Bellarmine, and they're younger, and every single member of Team Canada has field experience, and that has shown up as they continue to improve all week long under uh, an excellent, excellent, sharp staff led by Randy Mearns. Wearing that Canada 51 jersey to show support for former Canadian world team member Sean Williams and his family going through a difficult time back home. An inspirational message for the guys in red. 8-5 Canada. Buchanan carefully measuring his steps with Pinnell. Pinnell on the go. Question mark dodge and he floats it high. Merrill was there with him. Lawson's looking for the ground ball. Out of bounds to the United States. Time is running. We will have stop time in 18 seconds. It stops under three minutes in the fourth. Quick passing. Lavelle turns the corner. He's knocked down. The United States does not have a timeout, nor does Canada. Dylan Ward looks up field and finds the open man. It's Jesse Gamble bringing it to safety. It's a race against the clock right now for Team Canada. They are in run and hide mode. They can use the whole field. The U.S. has got to get on their horse now and press down in a 10-man ride. Fewest goals a U.S. team has ever scored in a single FIL World Lacrosse Championship game nine. Back in pool play 2010 against these Canadians. They've held them to five tonight. Give the ball to Lee Zink and the Stars and Stripes. Down the wing for Rabel. Time to go now with 2.20. Inside it comes. Lavelle lost the ball again. The long clear on the mark. Earl will run for cover away from Evans and go right to the cage. One on one with Schwartzman. Huge save by Jesse. It gives the United States a slim hope with two minutes to go. I don't love that shot at all, Joe. I thought David should have carried that ball behind the goal and, and, and run to freedom. Abbott the other way with a tremendous wheels. Suffers from asthma. You would never know it. Rabel off the split dodge. Gamble is there. Help comes from Rubish. Holman delivers. Buchanan fakes. Gets inside, draws three. Rubish with the stick check. Vince with the ground ball. 100 seconds to go. Good stick check there. Hustle by Rabel on the end line, but the ball keeps bouncing back to Canada. Vince looks to clear. Gamble two. Cross field for Dylan Roy. 120 to go. How about Matt Vince? What an unbelievable effort that was off the Brody Merrill change of possession. Brody has played spectacular lacrosse in this fourth quarter, Joe. 
handful of ground balls. Canada looking for its third ever world title and hoping to deny the United States its tenth. It's shot wide by Jeremy Noble, and thankfully for Canada, they get awarded the ball. Here comes a double team in the corner. This is going to get dicey. Time stops now. No longer running time on the clock. They double team. Ball is down. U.S. has it. No timeouts. Bernhardt, who scored an electrifying goal here in the fourth, looks to clear. Under a minute left for the United States. The pre-tournament favorites are in major trouble. Holding, spins, keeps it. Samurai work from Bernhardt and Durkin. It's out of bounds. It'll be U.S. ball. There's only 42 seconds to go. Abbott will clear. Mr. Versatility floats it on for Seaball. Seaball with all that speed running downhill into the lane. Max Seaball wheels inside, fires, he missed the target. Time stops with 30 seconds to go. It's a three goal deficit. Pinnell working, Pinnell holds. Merrill is there. The pass goes over the head of Holman. The celebration is starting to begin in earnest. They are Let's jumping go. for joy on the Canada side. 21 seconds left. Use the whole field here, Joe. McIntosh will just walk to the corner. Holman there to chase. Down to 12 seconds left. Canada's journey began a mile high in Denver. This one is soared to the end zone stands. They are now on top of the world for Team Canada. Game's not over here yet, gentlemen. Schwartzman fires, the siren sounds. They are asking for the Canadians to get off of the field with two ticks left. Talked about Team Invincible. USA dominating their way through pool play. But this Canadian team, after that 10-7 setback on opening night, game plan masterful. Execution, effort, focus. Dylan Ward between the pipes. Steph Snyder, Brody Merrill, Kevin Crowley. It's elementary now. Canada can start celebrating for real with goalkeeper and MVP Dylan Ward. Team Canada, world champions in 2014. Your trusted choice player of the game tonight, the net miner, Dylan Ward, who's also the tournament MVP. And the trend continues, Q. The team that wins in the round robin play loses to its counterpart in the final. Difficult to make adjustments off the win, and then when you steamroll teams like Australia, Japan, England, and the Iroquois Nationals, USA came into this game feeling awful good about themselves. They were outworked early in this game, and that set the tempo. When you think about the ground ball battles in the first quarter, Joe, that set the tempo of this ball game. Canada was more ready to play. USA stick work wasn't sharp early, and I thought the effort from the guys in the red shirts, they dictated pace and tempo by their hustle on the loose rocks. And you go back to that first quarter, they owned the carpet. Sorrowful huddle for Team USA, taking silver in these... World Championships, the elation of Team Canada bubbling over. A magnificent night for Kevin Crowley, who had five goals. Mark Matthews can barely contain himself as the United States suffers the sting of an 8-5 setback. Paul Carcaterra has the victorious Canadian netminder, Dylan Ward, close by. Dylan, they called Team USA, Team Invincible, maybe the greatest team ever. What made you think that you guys could come out on top tonight? Family. Just one word, family. We believed in each other. We believed in what the coaches told us to do, and we went out and executed it. You look at your history and how you came out as a goalie. 
Chris Sanderson, Kyle Miller, Dylan Ward, all from Orangeville, Canada. What does this moment mean for you when they're looking down on you? It's unbelievable. You know, those two taught me everything I know. They, uh, I, I can't put into words right now how much it means to be a part of that legacy. And, you know, those two are unbelievable. What they meant to Canada lacrosse is it's unbelievable. And I hope, uh, hope I continue on that tradition. Dylan, your MVP of this tournament. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dylan and Paul, we appreciate it. For those just tuning in, magnificent goaltending from Ward. And what a typical goal. He can't even sense any kind of heartbeat or pulse there. How cool and calm he is. Got off to a good start, and that means a lot. Goes to the splits, pipe to pipe, easy. Focused, maybe his best stop of the night, robbing Rabel from about three feet. He handled the ball with perfection. He led his defense in and out of zone. And there is one of the legends of Canadian lacrosse now who has his second world championship. Brody Merrill, twice named the best defender in the world back in 2006 and 2010. Jeff Snyder, heroic as always for Team Canada. A valiant effort from the United States, but the highest scoring team in the tournament. A team that scored goals at will was neutralized in this championship final and only found the back of the net five times. <laughs> you think about the way Team Canada mixed in some zone defense today held their matchups down low and milked the clock. Down Canada. with Jeff Snyder and Jeff. Team USA specifically took two face-off guys on their roster to stop you, and it wasn't successful. Why were you on fire tonight? Um, you know, I think preparation in terms of the coaching staff and, and wing play. You got a guy like Brody Merrill, Jordan Hall. Dan Coach, Jordan McIntosh, those guys are uh, those guys are warriors. When you got guys like that supporting you, um, you know I don't know if there's a clean face-off win tonight. So uh, wing play definitely, um, systems definitely, and, and uh, you know the, the heart and soul of the guys in this group. I saw an emotional moment with you and Dave Huntley, GM of Team Canada. You were crying. You guys exchanged some words. What did you say? Um, well, we lost two big parts of this uh, organization and, and two very good friends. Um, you know they're. Uh, they're dearly missed and, and a big reason why um, you know I do what I do so uh, Hunts is a big part of that and, and um, you know those guys are, 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 are you know icons in Canadian lacrosse and, and um, you know, it's hard not to keep those guys dear to your heart and, and Dave and I were close friends with both both Chris and Kyle. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Even the most grizzled of veterans overcome with emotion championship brethren Team USA all gathered round 142 days, or rather 142 games, 10 days in the FIL World Lacrosse Championships. As Dave Petromala counsels his troops, we're going to reflect back on the sights and sounds of what was a wonderful tournament. And Q, allow me this indulgence. A sincere thanks to all the men and women in our crew, ESPNU and Altitude, and especially on the grounds here, Chuck Scatterday. You think about the pageantry. Uganda lacrosse winning two games. The success of Team Japan and Israel. This event had everything. Team Uganda, it's proof positive that the missionary sport and spirit of growing the game is so valuable and so worthwhile. Team Iroquois placing third, the highest ever for them. Camaraderie between nations. Scotland's bagpipe, the New Zealand haka, flags and colors and supporters. 38 eight teams when it was all said and done. The United States marching onto the field for a championship finale for the eighth time against their superpower buddies from Canada. And tonight, the Canadians were too much. Quint, your final thoughts. I'm, I'm shocked in a lot of ways, but they had the perfect game plan. From face-offs to goaltending to ground balls, Team Canada, by far the better team tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Canada 8, the United States 5. The Canadians are champions of the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse title. For Quint, for Cart, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thank you so much for watching. All hail Dylan Ward in Canada.